And hello there, welcome to the Red October Network. Uh, might know something a little different about me. Um, uh, the Rex Specs. Actually, this is because um, I put these on, I bought them at Five Below, and <laughs> I just bought them as a joke because I think it make me look more intelligent. But it doesn't. So anyways, uh, I realized um, that I've had kind of a career epiphany, I guess you could say, uh, in the past month or so. Um, as I don't think I told anybody this, but I am taking non-credit courses at CCAC uh, for electrical maintenance and wiring. So uh, this is really interesting. <laughs> I honestly, uh, I'm doing it for a couple reasons, I think. The biggest reason I'm doing it is uh, just kind of do something fun one night a week and learn a skill, which is uh, important. And hopefully if I like this, we will perhaps go into a trade school. Now I'm almost 26, I, I, and you're probably like looking at me like, well, why the hell would you want to do that? You went to Penn State. Well, I gotta tell you something right now. Penn State isn't really worth anything to me. I mean, it, it, when, when I went there, it really kind of was to do meteorology, and I knew that there was work in meteorology and, and whatnot. I ended up with geography because I couldn't do math. The unfortunate thing is with it is that according to many uh, people, they say, oh, if you go to trade school, you'll make $60,000 a year right out of school. And, you know, you just go two years. And I think that's partially true, but there's a lot of things that I notice. First of all, uh, I do believe everything that they say about uh, people, you know, going not going to trade school out of college. In fact, I actually pulled up a statistic uh, that said that out of my... Out of the Graduating class in my high school in 2011, 92% were going to college and only like 5% were actually going to a technical or vocational school. So I can sense kind of a gold mine there, I guess you could say. Um, but uh, the other thing I noticed too when I went to this class, uh, I'm taking it just one night a week for three hours, really just for giggles. and. But when I went there, uh, we had about 10 students in the class, and myself and another guy were the only young people there. And so, I, I, I mean, that kind of confirms the fact that a lot of young people, I think, do not want to go into a trade or technical school. And it's, it's a problem. I mean, it's a problem for me, obviously, because I, I mean, I try to sell myself as going to a good school, getting the major two minors, and it's a hard science, but in reality, I mean, it, it's really tough. I mean, I know even there's some TV meteorologists I know who are just starting out, and yeah, they're only making 30 grand a year. And, you know, that's tough, especially for TV meteorology. But I don't need to rant about that. Uh, I'm really struck by uh, what I was told also, and that is you have to have, like, five years of apprenticeship before you can go out on your own and I think a lot of people especially on the Yahoo boards kind of say oh you know you can go right out of trade school you, you know get the welders card and whatnot the problem is with that is that uh, when this college bubble bursts uh, which it will I mean eventually the debt is going to be so mountainous and so voluminous that uh, What's going to happen is basically I think that somebody's going to have to discharge a debt. I think it's probably going to be the federal government thanks to Sally May. Oh yeah, the, it always sounds like the government always has a bunch of illegitimate children from Alabama, doesn't it? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Sally Mae. But anyways, uh, I really do think that it will be a little bit interesting, uh, to say the least. I. I'm I'm wondering, you know, what your thoughts are on it. Uh, obviously, 
you know, I probably, if I don't find a job in my field, I don't really feel like going back to Penn State. I mean, I, I, I just I just don't believe in it, that going back and getting our certificate or getting a master's or getting this and getting that. I mean, yeah, it's more learned stuff, but, you know, I don't have any more money. I mean, you know, I, I, I work. I work at a department store. I only get 30 hours a week if I'm lucky. I mean, I only have, like, 300 bucks every two weeks. It's lucky I'm living at home, you know, and I am not mooching. I'm trying to get out of here because it's, it's torture. It is, and uh, you know, ha I mean, I don't mind doing my own laundry and everything, but it just seems like uh, reading these articles and everything that a lot of people are kind of set up to fail if you go to college, because especially if you go to to uh, a lower level like a community college, which is a good idea for two years, not for four. Uh, and they get all these history and arts degrees and, you know, and they really don't want you to make any money. And, and it's really a problem. I mean, I had a nice argument with my mom earlier today that, that Reaganomics is not a trickle down, but a trickle up where it's supposed to be that the lowest people contribute the most money and it collects at the upper levels. And for some reason she could never come up with that come up with a good answer she says well it's just the price of capitalism I said well if, <laughs> if what about me I'm not up there in that opportunity because my mom's pretty well to do uh, but uh, you know it's trickle up where you know where the lower people a lot of lower people fund the the upper people and it's really an analysis I'm not going to go too much into detail with it but uh you know, with with all this stuff that's happening with college, I mean, trade schools are good, but it's only good because there's such a shortage. I mean, if everybody knows how to fix a pipe or everybody knows how to put a wall switch in like I do, then, you know, my skills are really worthless. Uh, and we don't need a lot of auto techs. What we need is we, we need a couple things. We need, basically, with college, we need somebody to... In, give incentive, the government or somebody to give incentive to hire college graduates. Honestly, that's the first way, that's the biggest way you can go in fixing this economic mess. I don't like the fact that everybody, all these companies are willing to give unpaid internships where this would have been paid a long time ago. But, you know, it's kind of disgusting in, this, in a sense. But, uh, one of the pans are wearing glasses. These do fog up. You can tell. Make me crooked eyed. But, uh, you know, and and all this money and all this debt that we have to go into now just to get an entry level. I mean, look at, I mean, if you go work where I am, there's all these people and they all have college degrees and they're working for minimum wage part time. And it's bad. And, you know, everybody's saying, well, there is a shortage of good people, you know, to do good jobs like engineering where we have to bring people in from China and India. And it's not that. I mean, we have stupid people. We have the lower class. We have the middle. We have the really smart people. It has been and always will be here in, that, in this nation. We have to make sure that the smartest people go and get the master's degrees. And then you get the people who get this bachelor's. And then you have the trade schools. And then you have all the you know, all the arts degrees and associates degrees and everything, because that's the way it works, but unfortunately we've gotten to the point now where there's no trade school, and there's just everybody has a bachelor's, and a few people have a master's, which, I gotta tell you something, unless you work for the feds, it's a waste of money. <laughs> it is, and, uh, and so we have to we have to do some stuff. First of all, we we still need to get kids to go to trade school, but we don't need to have that become the next bubble because everybody says, oh yeah, when the shit hits the fan or whatnot, having a skill like that is good. The problem is with it is when the shit hits the fan, chances are everybody's gonna have that skill. So, but if you can fix something, I mean, even taking this non-credit course. If I could fix switches for fifty dollars a week, or wire a light bulb, or something like that, or put a three-way switch in, I'm already ahead of the game, and it's it it's really it's really tough. So, 
you know, and all all the power too to the military. Although I don't really, f a lot of people on these boards will say, oh, you should go to the military. Every person should sh serve in the military, and not everybody's right for it. Not everybody is able and fit. And yeah, I've heard stories, and I've said sometimes I think our youth is basically, you know, we know how we know how to work our iPod and iPhone and iPad and you know, all our Game Boys and everything, and Nintendos, and we really don't have anything. But that's not the truth. Life sucks, but there's always something you can do about it. And so there, there's a lot of things that you can do. I mean, if if everybody could learn, like, to do like I did, build, like, the computer that you often see me post videos on the Red October Network on, you know, we really, uh, we really could do something, you know. Or build, uh, or build switches, or do electrical work. Simple stuff. That's the way. I mean, you know, sometimes they get afraid. I block gold, which I'm gonna actually have probably my next video on. And uh, I might as well ask now, what do you think about gold? Should I keep investing? But anyways, um, but the economy really, I think we ha we've shifted some shipped so many jobs overseas. And that hit, the the place where that hits the hardest is probably the the older people like the 50 plus college students like me or college graduates really aren't too worried about that. We moved away from that. Um, I think a big thing to notice here, and especially in Pittsburgh and our local economy, is that a lot of people do want their kids to go to college because they saw what the steel industry did, and that was tradesmen's work. My neighbor was laid off from the steel industry and their lives have not been the same. I know a lot of people down on the south side who are in the steel industry, they got laid off. Uh, J&L Steel down there is no more. The Homestead Works is now Shopping Plaza. You're seeing the shift in the paradigm. But that's why we're so scared to send kids to trade school. That's why only 5% or whatever was going to trade school. And but the but I I will say this about the military. I said it has to be the right people. You cannot just have a draft like in Vietnam. We don't need more bodies over there. I have friends who are in the military. They deserve it. And you know what? I'll tell you something good about the military. It doesn't seem like any guy I know who's in the military ever has trouble getting girls. Near the police officers. But that's my point anyway. So my throat's starting to get sore. So. My glasses and I are going to head out. So, uh, I'm making my case for trade schools. I asked a lot of questions there. I, I, I wonder what you think about the job climate. Do you think everybody should go to trade school? Uh, do you think uh, that everybody, you know, that we should have some sort of uh, incentive to bring jobs back over here and give them the college students or give them the young people? Uh, what do you think is the best thing we should do to the young people? And so that's my question. So, anyways, until then, uh, we'll see you guys later. This is a long vlog, I know, but we'll be heading out. Have a good night.